Live from the heart of Baylor Bear Country, the most comprehensive free game coverage, this is Game Day Live, powered by Sikkim 365 and KWTX News 10. And good afternoon and welcome to Baylor Game Day and Game Day Live with Paul Catalina to my left, Craig Smoke to my right. I'm David Smoke, and we are proud to be a part of this show. And we will bring you a pregame show for an hour and a half every single Baylor home game and or like next week on the road in Provo, Utah. We will hear from Greg Gattuso, the head coach at Albany today. We'll hear from Dave Aranda today, Bob Thompson, former Fox Sports executive today, Travis Roeder on the keys to the game and also, one of perhaps the best segments we'll do with former Baylor offensive lineman Blake Blackmar in his cooking or tailgate segment with recipes and also a few little suggestions on how to enjoy some food. Behind the scenes, Jacob Wilson, Jack McKenzie, and also Garrett Ross. We are here. College football, there's a few games that are a little bit tighter than we think. We'll get to scores later on. We're going to hear from Darby Brown from KWTX in a moment. Paul Catalina, Craig Smoke, let's go. Yeah, it's uh, it's here. College football season is here. I have many thoughts and many things that have happened, uh, and we'll get to you know Baylor and Albany. I don't know what the ACC is thinking scheduling road games in the AAC and thinking that's going to come out okay for them. Uh, the Big 12 is going to be super interesting. I know Oklahoma fans are already excited about Jeff Levy because they just heard of him six months ago, uh, but uh, it's uh, it's really, really, really good times in college football today. Yeah, that uh, Oklahoma offense looks awfully familiar. I think we've seen that around these parts. And, you know, seeing uh, – I was making a comment to the guys a few seconds ago of – it's funny, I, I'm seeing tweets that I tweeted out like 10 years ago that are now like fresh and brand new for Oklahoma fans because it's like, wow, a 60-second drive and a 25-second drive and a 35-second drive. But that's got them up 28-10 to 10 right now. So not, uh, not sweating it, but not perfect on the day. And that's just one of – Many, many games uh, that we're going to talk about and excited to have college football here. And, of course, Baylor at home against Albany in a game that was a last-second change to the schedule because Louisiana Tech asked out of the game. Uh, they played Missouri and lost earlier this week. And so Baylor and Albany at 6 o'clock today. We will read your text messages, 254-339-1122. And also the chat room is underway at 365 Sports on YouTube. Oklahoma State took care of business Thursday night, TCU. And Kansas took care of business last night in the Big 12. And, of course, West Virginia had that gut-wrenching loss to rival Pitt Thursday night. Craig and Grayson discussed that quite a bit, uh, of course, yesterday during and throughout the show. So... There are games today that will make a difference. Now, will they make a difference when we get to December or even January? Maybe, but Georgia's flexing their muscles. Cincinnati and Arkansas in one heck of a game early. And how about Jeff Trailer and UT San Antonio, UTSA, having themselves a pretty nice start to that game as well. The good news about the games, and we've said this for the longest of times in a weird and strange offseason, it has been a season about everything but playing the games. It's been about money, NIL, about transfer portal, about realignment, about the college football expansion. And now it's about evidence of seeing games. And that's what we are really fans to see. Yeah. I mean, I uh, I would think it'd be really sad if I was a fan just waiting for the offseason go, man, I can't wait to hear about a TV deal. It's going to be so like, I cannot wait to hear Fox's numbers on distribution. Yeah. It's yeah. wow. Yeah. Uh, that's Craig, what it's all about. Craig, you mentioned this on Thursday. Uh, that, that you will see probably even columns and stories written. Instead of who won the games, who's ranked in the top 25 or this and that, there might be even like national rankings on how many people watched a game, which has never been important to me other than the fact, yes, it's important because of the TV deals. No, I mean, I mentioned that as something that I don't want anybody to follow through with doing. Uh, I think it's a silly practice. I've watched it with some of my other favorite hobbies. People dive into comparing tv ratings and i said that as a warning to not do that yep. because it will zap your joy if you're worried about how many people are watching a game just watch the game just watch the game watch your team and enjoy it and you know that really goes kind of for the uh the hardcores uh, across the country that listen to our show that you know want to compare the pac-12 versus the big 12 and i can just see it coming down the pipeline of what's another way to compare and say who's better than who oh let's compare these games so let's avoid all that let's just enjoy the games themselves and let the chips fall where they may when it comes to expansion. Uh, but, you know, that's also something that took a, perhaps a little bit of a turn yesterday. Certainly uh, college football took a turn yesterday with the big news about the playoff. So for all the hand-wringing over the Pac-12's future or the Big 12 and what was going to happen with them or 
Uh, how many teams are the Big Ten going to add? How many teams, you know, will the SEC add one day? All that talk, it at least for a moment yesterday, kind of just calmed down because everybody looked around and realized an expanded playoff means that all of those things can still exist as they are or as different versions of what they've been. And, you know, still some details to figure out, but an expanded college football playoff, I don't think it dampens excitement. I think it allows people to be excited again because they're not fearful of not being able to be excited anymore. Six conference champions, the highest ranked, along with six others. And so, yes, everybody has a chance when they start working out in August in the future, whenever that clicks in at 24, 25, or 26. Now, want to thank a, a handful of people. We'll hear from Darby Brown from the stadium in just a moment. Josh Young, general manager at KWTX, he and I sat down back uh, late in the spring to discuss uh, a relationship or partnership that we have with each other. He also was a main brainchild of all of what we're doing right now with this live show. Brian Etheridge, uh, Ashley Hodge, and Colt Barber as well. And so many of us behind the scenes or in front of the camera, this is fun, and we can't wait to bring you 90 minutes of Baylor pregame, but also a lot of college football on Saturdays when Baylor plays. And again, there's a Thursday game down the road against West Virginia. Darby Brown, Chris Williams, also Barry Bass, who's helped us quite a bit as well with a lot of the technical work behind the scenes as well. But Darby Brown is at the stadium at McLean Stadium. She's going to be a part of our pregame show, and she's at McLean Stadium. And Darby, football season is here. Yes, it is. It feels so great to be out here at the stadium. I think the bear walk is actually, if not happening right now, about to happen because the buses, I don't know if you can see behind me, the buses just rolled up. So the team is here. Bear walk's about, about to happen. There's some sort of surfboard thing going on in the river as well. Fans are coming in. It's a little steamy here, but it feels so great to be here and see all the green and gold and the fans back going into the stadium. It's it's the best time of year. So, Darby, uh, what's kind of the buzz around the stadium right now? This is a team that last year, the first game, I mean, I'm sure there was a little bit of excitement. People are excited to be back, but there was a 2-7 and seven team. Now this is the defending Big 12 and Sugar Bowl champs. Do you feel a, a sense of different uh, kind of vibe from the fans this year? I absolutely do. I got here at about three o'clock and I felt like there were already a lot of people here tailgating. And I feel like that was a lot more than last year. So I think that the attendance might be up quite a bit this year. And just the fans seem really happy to be here, really excited. Obviously, there's a lot of pressure now on the Bears that comes with that. But I think that there's definitely a different energy this time of year. And everyone's just really fired up to see this team. As you know, Darby, and you're there quite a bit, the media sessions throughout the workouts in August, whether Dave Aranda, assistant coaches or players as well. What was maybe something you took more out of all of what you heard throughout the month of August about Baylor and what they thought about their own team? I think the biggest thing is they're very confident in who they are and who, and are, you know, they were trying to find their identity of who they are right now tune in on that and not really listen to the outside of, oh, this team has to, you know, live up to the certain expectations that come with following a Big 12 championship. I think that they were really focused on, on let's be honest about where we're at now, how we can get better, the areas we need to improve. And I mean, you guys know Dave Aranda and everybody, they're just, they, it seems like, you know, they're, they're confident, but they're also really focused, which is, is what I was gathering from everything we've heard this, this uh, preseason. Darby, what are your thoughts on the new skill position guys that they're going to have to break in? Obviously, we saw a little bit of Blake Shapin last year, and and from what we saw was was pretty darn good at quarterback. But we've seen very little of Tay McWilliams and Hal Presley and uh, Monterey Baldwin and guys like that, Seth Jones, over the last couple of years. And they've got to step up and make big contributions. What do you think about those guys on offense? Yeah, they really got to prove a lot quickly, I think. But, you know, the big thing is, obviously, we know Baylor's offensive line and defensive lines are very experienced. I think that the Bears can lean on that, especially early in the season. Obviously, that's going to help all of those guys out. But I think I'm really curious to see how you mentioned Tay McWilliams, definitely him. And then you touched on Blake Chapin. I think a lot, a thing that's been overlooked is, yeah, we saw him. He was great last year, but he's in a new role. He is the guy, and I'm curious to see how he responds to that pressure of the leadership that's needed and everything else that comes with being QB1 from the start of the year. You know, Darby, I remember you hustled and had that story with Denny Duran, the head coach at Evangel Christian in Shreveport, where Blake Shapin played his high school ball. That was the week before the Sugar Bowl, after he had made the great run against Kansas State, and then, of course, the Big 12 championship win. You learned quite a bit about him. Has anything he's done, what you learned from Coach Duran, surprised you? 
I mean, I think last year we didn't know a lot about him when he was in that Big 12 championship game. So I think what I learned afterwards was really interesting and really spoke to the character. And he is just a guy that I think he's an awesome guy. And behind the scenes, there's a lot of good things going on. And he's not very flashy. He's not going to really talk about it. He's not really going to, you know, make it obvious kind of what he's doing and, and the type of person he is. But I think that we'll continue to see glimpses of that this year. And I'm excited. I'm very excited to get to know him better and see what he can do for the team this year. We appreciate you being a part of it, Darby. Chris, of course, on occasion as well. And KWTX is our partner along with what we do. Thanks for your time. We'll be back with you in about an hour. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Darby Brown, KWTX with us. 365 Sports in the pregame show, uh, game day, and we are here until 5.30. Game kicks off a little after 6 o'clock. It's an ESPN Plus game, McLean Stadium, Baylor, and Albany as well. All right, uh, there are some good news. The Big 12 trying to make sure they have a pretty good week. That was a tough loss, West Virginia. Grayson and Craig went over that quite a bit. Oklahoma, as we mentioned, they're, they're firing big bullets at, uh, at, at UTEP, who they should be doing that with. But it, we'll look at scores along the way. I like TCU, what they did late last night against Colorado. That was nice. Kansas wins. Never take those for granted. It was nice to see them dominate somebody they should dominate. When we come back, we're going to hear from Travis Roeder. He's a, one of our football analysts with Sikkim365.com and also 365 Sports. We'll update the scores around the top 25 and the Big 12. This is 365 Sports. Game Day Live on News 10 is sponsored locally by TFNB, your bank for life, Advanced Pain Care, and Central Texas Plumbing Solutions. What sets Hillcrest Dental Care apart is our vision of how we want to care for our patients to improve their health and their quality of life, whether it's the teeth, the gums, the bite, or the smile. Because I didn't feel anything at all. When I woke up there, I had everything done. I'd go to the restaurant to eat, and the waitress said, this, you got new teeth. And so they noticed them too. <laughs> if you want something done, they just good and permanent there, this is the place to go. Grassroots is a community builder through community engagement and home ownership. Our community engagement efforts seek to help neighbors connect, lead, and advocate on behalf of their community. Our home ownership efforts provide financial literacy, affordable home building, and home repairs that lead to the building of generational wealth. We need $2,000 per family to provide matching funds towards purchasing a home. I'm Carol Weaver, your local mattress expert. For 23 years, we've been selling the best mattresses at the best price on Valley Mills Drive. The new Beautyrest Black has arrived, offering great cooling features, highly durable foams, and supportive state-of-the-art pressure-relieving springs. Beautyrest Black is on sale now at Waco Mattress Center. With easy financing and awesome service, we make it stress-free to get a great night's sleep. I'm Carol Weaver. Thank you for your business and keeping it local. Waco Mattress Center. Travis Roeder's Keys to the Game are brought to you by Richard Carr Buick GMC Cadillac. We're now joined by Sikkim 365 Radio football analyst Travis Roeder, who breaks down X's and O's in film and much more before and even after the game joins us. He'll be a part of the Keys of the Game brought to you by Richard Carr Motors, and Travis joins us now. Travis, thanks for your time. Are you, ha you happy like everyone else? We have a game today. Sweating my butt off and glad it's a Saturday with football on. Well, we're glad to have you each Saturday with this pregame show, and thanks for your knowledge of being a part of it. So let's go over. We have the graphic up. Your keys of the game, uh, of this game with Albany. Uh, we'll get to it in just a second, the keys of the game. Let's, first of all, discuss this should be a game where Baylor pretty much just does their business. Do you, do you agree? Uh, no, I think it's going to come down to the last drive. Of the fourth quarter. No, of course yeah, I agree. Of course not. Um, <laughs> you know, uh, uh, so next week, you know, when we do BYU, I can promise you all we'll have done plenty of prep. I've been doing plenty of prep all off season for that game. Um, I don't know really the first thing about Albany as players. It doesn't really matter uh, when you look at the history of when you know FBS teams, let alone kind of a top ten quality FBS team like Baylor, 
when they play middling to bad FCS teams. Um, it's not a full on waste of time, but you know, it's a, it's a very much more about Baylor. It is in this game than it is about Albany. That's for sure. All right, let's go over your keys of the game. Travis is going to be with us during the pregame here on 365 Sports and CW Channel or KWTX. And let's go over your keys to the night's game, Baylor and Albany. Okay, so the first one's going to be, um, you know, really Baylor kind of being able to run into a stack box. Uh, but Aranda's talked all off season about, you know, we got to have our fastball set up. And for Baylor, everything's going to start with their wide zone running game. It's kind of their bread and butter. It's how the entire offense is built around it, and that's not just coach speak. The playbook is literally all built around this play. And so I think what you're going to see here in this game is, you know, if it's a third and four against anybody else, they might want to throw or really try and hunt a matchup or something like that. But in tonight's game, they're just going to say, I don't care if there's 11 men in the defensive box. Uh, you know, you better go get that first down. We're just going to run base off and see what you can do. Because there's going to be situations later this year when you have to run, the other team knows you're going to run it, and you got to get it done. So that's what I'm looking for in this game. You know, when when they uh, when they see what these players can do in that situation where it's not advantageous for them schematically, but this is a team you're so much better than. They want to see what they can do when they're up against it there. So that's that first one. Uh, do we want to just keep running through the rest of them, smoking? Yes, go ahead. Okay. But the other thing I'm looking for is. Um, for Blake Chapin, Baylor's new starting quarterback, of course, he has a couple games of experience from last year, but the wide receiver core is totally revamped. And I want to see, you know, Baylor's obviously not going to throw it all over the yard tonight. Um, I'd be surprised if Baylor's quarterbacks have more than 25 passes on the entire uh, evening. But I think in the first half, they're very much going to treat it kind of like a regular game, uh, no matter how much they're up, because they know that they got to get some, they got to get some experience between Blake Chapin and these. And uh, these wide receivers, you know, they need to build a rapport. Uh, so that's the other thing I'm looking for is, you know, when they just try and throw a slant, you know, does it work? Does it look like they're in sync, they're in timing? Because that kind of stuff does translate against better opponents as well. Um, and I'm sorry, Snook, I don't have the graphic up in front of me. Would you mind? Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. I, I got you, Travis. Uh, your next you. one, your next one is play within the system. Uh, elaborate, oh, yeah. Yeah, elaborate there. Yeah, I mean, so what you want to see is, you know, it's all off season. these guys, no doubt have been dreaming about, you know, I'm going to be the guy who gets the pick six or I'm going to get the big sack. And this big moment, I've been, you know, think about it, you know, they're waking up at 5 a.m. every day to, to go work out and get stronger. And it's, and it's all for these, you know, 11, 12, 13 games that play out through the year. And this is the first one. And especially against a poor opponent, you want to see guys know that, you know, it's all about just being doing your 111, as Aranda says. It's not about trying to be three guys on one play. You just got to be one guy. So I'm going to be watching out, especially on those starting units, uh, for the players who play within themselves to do their job and don't try and do too much. Because if Albany does end up breaking off a big player or something like that, I can guarantee you when you go back and watch the film, it's going to be because somebody kind of came out of their shoes and tried to do too much. So I want to see a team that, that plays with a strong mentality, a strong brotherhood, and doesn't try and get out of their job. Um, so that's what I'm watching for there. And then the final part I remember is, you know, this, this game isn't really about stats. It's not about total points. You know, presumably they was going to kind of coast to an easy victory here, but that doesn't mean there's nothing you can learn. Uh, I think in these games, really just kind of focus on focus on flashes of athleticism. Um, and by that, I don't mean you know they were run um, receivers are going to run right by all the TVs. I mean we know they're faster than them uh, than them already. And so what I what you really can see in this game though is guys who kind of uh, you know I remember Daylon Petrie against Kansas a couple of years ago when he first moved to this new position under Aranda. You could just see he's making plays all over the field. And so I think that's the kind of thing you can watch for. Who are a few guys that stand out that are playing within the system, as I said previously? Um, but And maybe it's not about total yards or anything like that, but you can just see, okay, I can see how this is going to translate against better competition. So I've got my eyes on guys like Al Walcott tonight, Tammy Williams, and, and Richard Reese at running back. I think those are the kind of guys that, you know, I don't really care what, what the stats say, but I want to see them flash that home run speed, you know, flash that playmaking instinct, those kind of things. Travis, uh, one follow-up for me is uh, don't you think that the rapport with the wide receivers in a game, even though during practice they're going against great DBs or uh, what appears to be a really good defense, do you feel like you might see two or three receivers flash tonight or do you think it might just be one or two? Oh, I mean, I think the, I would love to come out of this game with even just one. that you Because mm -hmm. like I said, what you're going to see in this game is 
every time they dial up a deep shot, it doesn't matter who it is. They're going to run right by the defensive back. But what I'm really hoping for is that after this game, we have at least one or two guys. You know, if it is up to three or four, that's awesome. But I think in a game like this, I really just want to see, oh, okay, we see that Blake Chapin and Josh Thurman have an unbelievable connection. Like, you can tell they know where each other is going to be and that kind of thing. Uh, maybe it's Seth Jones, maybe it's somebody else. Um, but, yeah, I think asking for more than that is kind of too much, just given the opponent how many total passes there's going to be. Uh, but it's very important going into BYU because they're going to have to throw the ball a lot in that game. Yeah, Travis, uh, you know, your last key to the game is flash some of that athleticism. And I, I kind of agree that that's kind of important because even though we, we think these guys are good athletes and we know they are, we haven't seen most of them do it yet. I know, I know. And, that's, and you know, that is really the ultimate draw. I'm so glad that Baylor has this game as the first game of the year because you can kind of feel some of that first game enthusiasm. In the middle of over, I mean, what a drain that is. But it's first game of the year. We want to see what these guys can do. Um, so many of these guys, especially at the skill positions, both offense and defense, um, I've never have been, never been on this stage before. You know, they have something you know silly. The 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 low number of receptions they bring back from last year. Um, I I think it's literally under five. So I mean, there's a lot of new guys out there. So I think flashing and seeing what they're able to do. Again, whether somebody has 60 yards, 120 yards, it doesn't really matter to me, but making plays that you can see them making them against people who are just as big and fast as them, that's what you want to see translate for the future. Travis, thank you very much. Uh, enjoy the game. Enjoy covering the game. We'll enjoy your, uh, again, insight and wrap summary of Baylor Albany at some point on the site and joins us on, on Mondays, by the way, with our talk show at just after 5 o'clock as well. Brought to you by Richard Carr, Buick GMC Cadillac. Go see the people that you can count on. And uh, I can tell you that the good people at Richard Carr, Buick GMC Cadillac are, in fact, the people you count on Highway 6 and the Imperial Exit. Thank you again to Richard Carr Motors. Here's a couple of updates from the Big 12. Earlier, this now a final, Iowa State. Uh, they handle Southeast Missouri State 42-10. Uh, final score, 42-10 Cyclones at home. Oklahoma up over UTEP at halftime, 28-10. Uh, also in the games tonight, you have South Dakota, Kansas State, 6 o'clock start along with Albany and Baylor. Murray State in the Joey McGuire era starts in Lubbock at Texas Tech at 7. And UL Monroe and Texas down in Austin, that game will kick off on the Longhorn Network at 7 o'clock. Kansas, TCU both winning last night. Uh, I think it was great. Guys, the Kansas rolls, they should, and they did. Uh, da Daniels, the quarterback, was very efficient, 15 of 18, 189 and a touchdown. Neil ran for over 100 yards. They can't take wins for granted. I think they'll just, you know, again, continue that process to get well, to a, uh, a team that's very competitive more week in and week out. Well, more often than not, lately, some of these gimme games for them or these the early non-conference games that are supposed to be gimmies uh, have not been that for Kansas. So they have to, to be excited about the way that they dominate. I know it's Tennessee Tech, but, again, wins are few and far between uh, in football in Lawrence, Kansas. Now, uh, yeah, they, they'd like to be more like that basketball team, and that's a long way off. But they, uh, yeah, they, they've got to enjoy that. They, they really do. Well, it's football season. Yeah. I don't care what school we're talking about. KU's going to have their fun and hoops, but they need to celebrate Lance Leipold and his football team. That's what it's about right now. And, yeah, they can't take any win for granted. Uh, so last night to see them not only win, but to win emphatically and win easily and comfortably and send the fans home happy I think is a, a great first step for the Jayhawks in 2022. Uh, obviously, it's it's going to ramp up in a significant way, but I believe that most people around the country uh, think that they have a shot to not finish in – you know, uh, certainly the seller, uh, the zero to one win seller, uh, which they're already, you know, at least, you know, climbing, knocking on the door to, to get back into the main house, but uh, also to not be in the back of the pack by themselves in the Big 12. I've seen more than a few people think that they could finish an eight or ninth spot in the in the Big 12. I don't know about that. But I do know I, I like some of the pieces that they have, and I like the belief that they have. And so good to see uh, Kansas get off to a nice start. Sonny Dykes in the TCU era began and very impressive. Had a huge second half after just up 7-6 to six over Colorado on the road to win 38-13. to 13. The number, the stat that jumped out at me, a team that you think would throw the ball a lot with Morris and Duggan, uh, it was uh, the running game. 275 yards and averaged 9.2 yards per carry against the Buffaloes from the Pac-12. Well, I would caution everybody to not take too much away from the very first week of the season uh, because everybody's just back playing for the first time and there's differing opponents and there's differing circumstances. So, 
Yeah, it's a good win for TCU. I was not very impressed watching them, though. Um, I know you guys are doing the Midway game. Uh, they, yeah, had some great moments. Uh, Darius Davis is a tremendous player. He is a, a game breaker, had a big return that kind of broke it open for them and made, allowed them to relax a little bit. But Chandler Morris got hurt. Uh, before he got hurt, he looked okay. Um, luckily for him, it doesn't sound like it's going to be an injury that keeps him out more than a week or so. Uh, but we did get to see Max Duggan come in there. And I, I, I think the score, guys, uh, is far more about how bad Colorado is than it is about how good TCU is. But TCU looked good in some spots. We'll see, you know, how that progresses with Sonny Dykes. But for a team that you would think offensively would be like right out of the gates, just offense would be easy to pick up. That was what they couldn't do very well. It just wasn't really gelling in the beginning. And you had Darius Davis kind of kick that kick that along and, and get them going. So that'll be interesting to see. Certainly not flawless. You don't expect that in week one, but some things to work on for TCU. And still an, an easy win when all was said and done there late because Colorado's just a, a world of, of a mess right now. And there's the Big 12 summary. And also, again, Iowa State winning, Oklahoma winning big. And, uh, uh, again, TCU last night along with Kansas. When we come back, we're going to get into some more discussion about Baylor football and them coming off the uh, Big 12 championship and also the Sugar Bowl, their best year ever in the history of the football program at 12-2 and two after two years with Dave Aranda. What to expect, expect in some ways from – and also about Dave Aranda, who will join us later in the show, as will Greg Catuso. He uh, is the head coach at Albany and how they took this game and what they expect – in this trip to Waco, they came into town early to kind of just get their feet on the ground out of Albany, New York, and we'll get hear from him as well. We'll also update you on the top 25, the A&M Aggies, highly ranked, uh, a delay with Sam Houston State, lightning, bad weather, whatever, but that game is now resumed in the third quarter. Georgia looks very impressive. All of that and more, Sikkim 365 Radio, 365 Sports, and CW Channel. Baylor Scott and White, Southwest Sports Medicine and Orthopedics, the team physicians for Baylor Athletics, diagnosing and treating all sports-related injuries, including concussions. These specialists also provide orthopedic services for athletes and non-athletes alike, whether it's knee or shoulder pain, hand or wrist injury, orthopedic spine care, and even an arthritis and total joint clinic. Trust the doctors Baylor Athletics trusts. Baylor Scott and White, Southwest Sports Medicine and Orthopedics, wants to get you back in the game. Pizza, burgers, and Bears football. There's no place around Waco that serves them all other than Bubba's 33. Come show your green and gold and enjoy some of Waco's best food and beverages while watching your favorite team, the Bears. When real Bears fans get hungry, Bubba's 33 is the number one spot for ice-cold drinks, hand-stretched, stone-baked pizzas, and bacon-infused burgers. Join us for indoor or patio dining. Bubba's 33, Waco's restaurant and proud supporter of Baylor Bears football. Sick'em, Bears. TFNB Your Bank for Life is the official local bank of Baylor Athletics. Find out why more Central Texans are making TFNB their bank for life. Sign up for our Edge Checking and Savings accounts to earn interest or cash back. With five convenient locations and an award-winning mobile app, banking has never been easier. TFNB Your Bank for Life. Member FDIC. Three Nations Brewing Company has 16 different beers on draft with a new beer every Friday. It also offers two air-conditioned tap rooms, a large indoor beer hall, a second-floor mezzanine offering a great overview of the brewing company and equipment and patio where you can relax under the shade. Plus, you can now experience the new Three Nations Beer Garden Grill on our shaded patio. Grab a cold beer and enjoy a bite from our freshly prepared and delicious menu. Street tacos, quesadillas, freshly cooked burgers and dogs, and veggie burgers, too. Nachos and and so much more all prepared and cooked on site. So come visit the award-winning Three Nations Brewing Company on East Vandergrift off I-35 in Carrollton. It was broad daylight. I stepped into a gas station for five minutes to grab a snack, and just like that, my car was broken into. They made out like a bandit. My laptop, my phone, everything. I called my agent to see what could be done, and he restored my faith in humanity. My claim was processed so quickly, and I was able to recover my losses. Stop by and see our agents at one of our three McLennan County locations. Coverage and discounts are subject to qualifications and policy terms and may vary by situation. Cars price right Zoom with lots of room. Average 
count on us, a dealer to trust. Have Richard Carr in Waco, Texas. Game Day Live on Sikkim 365 Radio is brought to you by Texas Farm Bureau Insurance, TFNB, your bank for life, Richard Carr Buick GMC Cadillac, Green Nations Brewing Company, Waco Regional Tennis and Fitness, Edward Jones Advisors, Ben Erlinson, Tom Albers, Brad Wilson, and Cam Heathcott, and Bubba's 33. We're back here on 365 Sports in the CW Channel, and David Smoke right here. I'm in the middle. Craig Smoke to my right. Paul Catalina is to my left, and we're going to update some of the top 25 scores and then talk Baylor as well as they are about to open the season tonight against Albany. Uh, A&M in a game that started five and a half hours ago, 24 nothing early fourth quarter against Sam Houston State. Haynes King's thrown for a couple of touchdowns, and in that game, a long delay because of severe weather that has been around the state of Texas quite a bit today. Miami at halftime leads Bethune-Cookman 42-10. Georgia wondered about them, not if they were good, but wondered about the game with Oregon against former defensive coordinator Dan Lanning. They're up 28-3, and that game has just kicked off the second half. Yeah, even if you sometimes know what they're going to do, if the guys who do it are just bad a dudes like Georgia has. Uh, almost forgot we we're on network television there, but uh, yeah, if they're just I think that word's fine. Isn't okay, it? <laughs> but I mean, just yeah. in case, I think that's okay. If they're if they're Georgia players, sometimes you can know what they're going to do, and they're just going to do it. Yeah, I mean, uh, it's the Bo Nix experience already in Eugene, Oregon. I mean, that was one of those transfer quarterbacks where you're like, okay, that's cool, but that doesn't guarantee anything as far as being wildly successful this year. So they've had a little bit of that roller coaster. I feel like already they also have a first time head coach who's facing the juggernaut national champion in his very first game who yeah he knows them but guess who also knows him uh, yep. the georgia bulldogs so uh not surprised I re i'm really not that georgia's up this big uh i thought maybe oregon could keep it a little bit more competitive at least early on uh but they just got trounced from the start uh georgia's basically going to name their score and they're on a completely different level uh that's not all that surprising that's in bent go ahead oregon number 11 in the country uh yeah, they're going to plummet uh although could get a little bit of a, a break because it, the fact that georgia is such a buzzsaw 28 now they just scored again 34-3 stetson bennett has thrown for 299 yards in that game very very uh, productive 21 of 25 for 299 and a touchdown. They've also run for four touchdowns. Georgia blowing out Oregon, and that is early third quarter, 35 to three. I have to say this uh, you're talking about teams leading 35 to whatever or 28 to four, and they're facing team or 20 to four, 20 to three, facing teams like Bethune Cookman. Georgia's yeah. doing this to uh, a near top 10 team in Oregon, so that's just the level the dogs are on. Outside uh, of the Big 12, other top 25 games, we'll have those in just a second. Yeah, I, I do want to say something about Stetson Bennett, and I don't, I, like, I watched West Virginia the other night, and my quick opinion on that is JT Daniels, an upgrade over Jared Nagy, for sure. I don't think West Virginia fans should get all that excited about him just yet. There's a reason he's at three schools, and look, even if that, though Stetson Bennett is now a legend for life in Athens, Georgia, because he led him to the national championship, if JT Daniels was healthy and better than Stetson Bennett, Kirby Smart would have no problem yep. telling Stetson Bennett, go on to your life as a, a guy who's, who's going to be the king of this town, and JT Daniels would be the quarterback. So that kind of tells you Kind of what you need to know about why guys transfer. Uh, Arkansas, 14 to nothing over the Bearcats in Cincinnati. Luke Fickle's team has been held scoreless. 14 nothing Arkansas at halftime. Future Big 12 team in Cincinnati. That's a little bit surprising. And then again, not really all that surprising. I mean, I think a lot of people pegged Arkansas to win this game. I did go with Cincinnati, and that might be a little bit of just the, the new Big 12 and, you know, pride and like you uh, hope. Maybe that's why you don't bet on hope, uh, you know, and certainly that was not a game I would have put money down on because, I mean, who the heck knows really what Cincinnati was going to look like with all their changeover from last year and the playoff run. And then Arkansas is always just kind of an enigma uh, and where exactly they fit in. But uh, there's a lot of like positivity going into this season for Arkansas just because of the coaching staff and the way they've been developing over the last few years and guys like KJ Jefferson obviously helping lead the way. So um, not entirely shocked by this, uh, but Ben Bryant for Cincinnati, you know, you take over for Desmond 
Ritter. It's been a rough day for him. Less than 100 yards passing. Uh, Cincinnati on the ground, 87 yards rushing. So they are really struggling to get the ball uh, going really anywhere. And down 14-0, they're going to have to figure out something in the second half or, or this is going to be a huge win for uh, Arkansas and the SEC right out of the gate. That's just a future Big 12 team down at halftime, 14 to nothing, and so is Houston. 24th ranked Houston in San Antonio against Jeff Trailer and the Roadrunners 14 to 7 UTSA uh, early third Ole Miss 21 3 at halftime over Troy BYU in a delay against South Florida Gary Bohannon former Baylor quarterback gets the start against BYU who he faced again last year when we come back we're going to focus in on Albany we'll hear from their head coach Greg Gattuso Later on, Darby Brown again from McLean Stadium. Blake Blackmar and his tailgate recipe and cooking ideas and suggestions. And also Dave Aranda, 365 Sports and the CW Channel. Central Texas Plumbing Solutions is the team you can count on to go the extra mile and resolve your plumbing problems quickly and thoroughly, getting it done right the first time. We want to wish the Big 12 champion Bears great success this season. Sick of Bears. I had bad, bad back pain for more than 15 years and had multiple surgeries that didn't work. Then when I got the spinal cord stimulator, I felt like a new man. Thanks to the people at Advanced Pain Care, I can finally enjoy quality time with my family. This reversible procedure works by blocking pain signals from the lower back and legs from reaching the brain. We've helped thousands of patients get relief, including myself. From Waco to Bastrop, there's a location near you. Advanced Pain Care, the pain stops here. When it comes to accounting or financial services, choose a firm where it's about you. At Patillo, Brown & Hill, we empower our clients to thrive and grow with a strong professional partnership that gets to know you and your business. Our longevity is a product of our top-notch team of innovative thinkers, critical problem solvers, and dedicated partners who provide a clear and comprehensive plan for your financial achievement. Patillo, Brown & Hill. Because it's more than numbers and data, it's about providing peace of mind. Central Texas Plumbing Solutions is the team you can count on to go the extra mile and resolve your plumbing problems quickly and thoroughly, getting it done right the first time. We want to wish the Big 12 champion Bears great success this season. Sick of Bears. Catch up on the day's news with KWTX News 10. It's game day live. Craig Smoke, Paul Catalina. I'm David Smoke. We appreciate you here on this opening weekend, full weekend of college football. There was a handful of games, of course, last week. And the Albany team, the uh, uh, the opponent tonight for Baylor, a game that was uh, a late add to the schedule because Baylor was supposed to open up against Louisiana Tech, who opened up earlier this week against Missouri. Albany needed a game. Baylor needed a game, and Albany said, hey, what the heck? And also, they'll get a nice check for being in Waco as well. They have played Syracuse. They've played Pittsburgh and other teams in the past. Well, they play Baylor tonight. Head coach Greg Catuso. Albany football head coach Greg Catuso joins us. Sick on 365 Radio, 365 Sports. We spoke with you when the game was announced several months ago, and, and it's here. Here we go. It's the opening week of the season. Where are you, in your opinion, with your football team after the fall workouts? Yeah, I think we're in good place. I think the biggest issue we had in the fall that we were concerned about is turned into a non-issue is just – um, integrating new people into our program. You have never shied away from playing good people, uh, obviously opening up with tough people. This is a challenge with what Baylor is, what they were last year, and who they're supposed to be again. What is the, I guess, the juggling act of wanting to play somebody good, needing a game, because that was also the case, and so did they, and then also how this helps your athletic department because of the fact you're playing an FBS school and you're going to get a nice check? Yeah, you know, I think we know at the FCS level that these games are critically what helps our budgets and helps our athletic departments. You know, the, the pandemic was brutal in New York. Budgets were hit hard um, ar around the country. And, you know, seems sometimes we forget about, you know, football's a game and, and, um, and it's so serious to us and so important to us. But these budgets and, and the amount of money that the schools have is really impacted. And so it was it was a big deal here. We we're recovering from that. But um, the money from our, our uh, guarantee games is obviously very important um, for our program, not just our program, but for our athletic department. You know, I could have 
been talked out of playing Baylor if somebody would have gave me the, uh, you know, an option. But, um, you know, I know how good they are. I, I know what kind of football team they have. Um, you know, I've, obviously, I've been watching a lot of them, and and uh, they're they're it's they're very well coached and they're very talented and big and athletic. And I think, you know, our kids see it as a challenge, and we're excited about getting there. But we also understand, um, you know, that we they're they're a top ten team, and that's a big challenge for us. Syracuse, Pittsburgh, North Dakota State, who's fantastic, as we all know, and what they've done with all the national championships. Is there any comparison with what you've seen from them and what you see with Baylor? Um, when I look at um, Baylor, they are they have a lot of similarities probably to more of a Syracuse, but they certainly have a better football team than we saw last year at Syracuse. More talent, um, you know, uh, obviously a higher ranking, but um, similarities in the style of play and speed and athleticism. So, you know, we see that. We think we're a better team than we were last year, um, and we're going to – that Syracuse game, though, the score got a little out of control at the end. Uh, we, you know, we really uh, – going into the second – middle of the second quarter, we're competitive and playing hard. We just got caught by the big play bite, and they, they hit us like three straight times on big plays, and that's the danger. You know, I know they're receiving core, a bunch of track athletes, and can run, and, and um, you know, we'll, we'll be as prepared as we can. But at the end of the day, we have to play our game, not turn the ball over, and, and try to get this thing into the second half. Greg, you know, th this is obviously a challenge, and one of the differences sometimes in the, the level of wherever you are is, is the offensive and defensive line, and that seems to be the strength of Baylor. When you watch them on film, and you've discussed them, obviously, with what they were last year and who they have coming back, with uh, Ika uh, and the line and the depth and the offensive line, I mean, do you just see something that's really very, very special? Well, yeah, I've been uh, – they're kind of different units in how they play. Uh, you know, the defensive – tackles or you know obviously he's a massive human being he's physical <laughs> he's athletic and you know we we see the things he does really well and and um they got a lot of size you know on both sides but the thing you know they're powerful on defense on offensive line i've been struck by how well they're coached i think um you know when you watch the the, the way they when they run the ball which they do a great job of the reason they're so successful in my opinion was just watching them on tape is the ability of the offensive line, they handle a lot of different looks. They're very coached. They're very structured in how they they work their combos and their footwork and things like that. I just, you know, they, they've they been impressive to me on tape. And um, I've been a D-line coach a long time. My eyes always gravitate to that offensive line and see how they play. And they, they, they're a heck of a unit. But the defensive line is obviously has massive issues for us to deal with, and you know we have we have some ideas of what we want to try to do, and and uh, we'll, we're going to try to execute them. When when you play this game, you expect to go out and win. I just I know that's you. That's your style. So what do you tell your team? What are the expectations this weekend? Well, you know sometimes people hear hear the things that. Um, I say and think that I'm conceding a game, and that's far farthest thing from the truth. You know, mm -hmm. I, I I have never walked on a football field in my entire life that there isn't a possible path to victory and and yeah and how you have to play and you know that's our job as coaches at Albany is to try to find a way to put our players in the best positions we can do and and um, you know we we failed badly last year at times as a staff and and I take that on my shoulders. I'm really disappointed that we didn't do a better job to help our team. But, you know, I feel like, you know, we're back on track. I think um, it's a tall order, but, you know, we feel like we have some good players. We feel like we, we're going to give them some problems and we're going to have to um, line up and execute our plays. The biggest thing I tell my team is you, you don't have to do anything spectacular to play play with these guys. you got to line up and do your job. If, if the moment you start trying to do extra and – and you're trying to make a big play or you're doing all those things is when the when the big play gets you. And if we can stay on our feet on their zones and their cuts and we can fit gaps properly and tackle well um, and get a few turnovers, then you never know what can happen in a football game. You see it year round. Um, big upsets happen, you know, and that's our, our we got to go in. And the lines are a big issue, as you said, but the other the area that's the biggest problem in these games sometimes is special teams. You know, they have way more depth than us. Um, to, to run kids out there and, and, and special teams are another big problem in these games. 
that we have to we have to show up and play well and to have any shot of getting this game into the second half. Uh, does the first week of the season ever change for you? The first games are nerve-wracking. You know, right now I'm worried about moving a football team. You know, we're we're bringing some family with us. We're you know we're we're coming down a day early. Um, you know, we're we're really you know want to give our kids a really good experience. You know, I've, we've heard so many good things about Waco and. You know, we're still waiting for Chip and Joanna to call us about <laughs> to and see us. But I, I, I'm not. I'm starting to get nervous that they haven't reached out. We're trying. You know, I'm just really fired up by getting down there and 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 seeing the place and and uh, getting ready for this football game. Thank you, Albany head football coach Greg Gattuso it was sick on 365 Radio, 365 Sports. Coming up next, Blake Blackmar. I mean, what the burger he's going to show you to cook is absolutely out of this world. You're not going to believe this. But if you would like to sign up for Sikkim365.com, go to Sikkim365.com slash KWTX, 15 bucks for the whole year preview. That's Sikkim365.com slash KWTX. More game day live here on Sikkim365, 365 Sports, and the CW right after this. Game Day Live on News 10 is sponsored locally by TFNB, your bank for life, advanced pain care, and Central Texas Plumbing Solutions. We all are experiencing how the current crisis is affecting our communication. Conducting virtual meetings or classes from the workplace or your home while maintaining security, efficiency, and effective communication throughout your organization is the new normal. Asbel Electronics can set up your business school or house of worship with hardware kits to enhance your virtual meeting experience and provide secure market-leading Cisco WebEx meeting or Teams for your face-to-face communication. Call Asbel Electronics at 254-824-0237. Hi, I'm Vic Fazell. During these trying times, you might want to just stay home. And at the Law Offices of Vic Fazell, we understand. That's why we're set up to handle your personal injury claim without you even having to come in. Just give us a call and we'll take it from there. We can send any paperwork straight to your smartphone or computer. Don't delay, because if we don't put money in your pocket, you don't owe us anything. I'm Vic Fazell. Grassroots is a community builder through community engagement and home ownership. Our community engagement efforts seek to help neighbors connect, lead, and advocate on behalf of their community. Our home ownership efforts provide financial literacy, affordable home building, and home repairs that lead to the building of generational wealth. We need $2,000 per family to provide matching funds towards purchasing a home. Hey team, football season is finally here and that means tailgating season is upon us. This year I'm working with Sikkim 365 to bring you a weekly tailgate video. It will be broadcast on their pregame show on local television in Waco and on my YouTube channel. I'm working with my sponsors Game Guard and Favorites Barbecue to bring this series to you. It's going to be awesome and we're starting off strong with a tailgate classic cheeseburger. Check this out. First things first, let's talk about these patties. 80, 20 ground beef, come to the tailgate, it'll be brisket. We're gonna get our little piece of parchment paper down into our burger mold. We're gonna be making roughly third pound patties. We're using this burger mold because I have it and I wanted to use it for uniformity. You can do it yourself. Today we're using favorite steak and see. If it's good enough for a steak, it's damn well good enough for a burger. First, we're gonna go on with a moderate layer of black pepper to give this a little bit of a brisket vibe. The favorite seasoning has pepper in it, but it's not super heavy because we don't wanna give you a bunch of filler. You can always add some coarse ground black pepper to just about anything. Rinse and repeat. Seasoned up, back in the fridge for a little bit till we're ready. Any good burger needs onions, just like any good football team needs a punter. You may not always want it, but you definitely need it. Today we're going with slow caramelized onions to give some nice sweetness and richness to this burger. Never been a huge lettuce guy on my burger, but I can convert. I can convert, I'm getting a little older. You know, maybe I should start eating some lettuce. Let's talk about our burger sauce starting lineup. Mayo, heart and soul of the sauce, heart and soul of the offensive line. Gonna direct the way this sauce goes. Our guards and tackles are ketchup, spicy brown mustard, W sauce and granulated garlic. 
all workhorse flavors. They all come to play in any good burger sauce. And the add-on, we've got our tight end is our pickle juice. Not necessary, but nice whenever they show up in the run game on a power run. Two thoughts on sauce. One, just like an offensive line, you only really hear about the sauce if it's either bad or it's elite. So let's go ahead and make it elite. Number two, don't ask me for measurements on anything because I cook with feeling, just like this. Ketchup for color. Gonna fill up our squeeze bottle. Oh my God, I am so good at measuring stuff without measuring stuff. Coaching point, you can add a little burger sauce to your lettuce for a quick slaw. Today we're cooking on my drum pit. Fellow Baylor football alum Jared Coyne made me this bad boy. We're going for 30, 45 minutes, direct heat. Come to the tailgate and I'll be smoking these on brandy, my big offset. All right, Shiner, let's try to have a little bit of professionalism over here so I don't look like an amateur. Oh my God. Gross. Oh yeah. Good Lord. Hit everything on the way down. Burgers are looking good. Nothing like the smell of charcoal and football in the air. First tailgate of the season, I'm going with American cheese. It's like your favorite power run play. You always come mm. back to it. That's why I use American cheese. Can't beat it. Classic. Doesn't get much better than this. Easy, beautiful, beefy tailgate burgers. Almost dropped my spatula. Let's get it. Let's talk burger assembly. Let's not lose on the details right here. I didn't used to be team lettuce, but I can't convert. We're gonna go toasted potato roll, lettuce on bottom, right? We toss that lettuce with the sauce so that we're getting the best of both worlds. This will help protect our delicate, beautiful buns from that greasy hamburger, right? Burger right on top, boom, beautiful. Third pound patties. Big enough to double stack, but I'd rather eat two burgers if I'm that hungry, right? Let's be real. Pickles, straight on the cheese. Use that melted cheese to lock those pickles in. Let's go with a, a I'm a quad pickle guy. Let's go for four, right? Four quarters, four quadrants. Get your fours up. The secret weapon, sauteed onions, caramelized onions, game changer. Right on top of the pickles, don't be shy, they're delicious. Little sauce on the top bun. Crown your kings. If you're coming to the tailgate, you'll get it just like this. I like to have a little backdrop to catch anything that comes out the back, you know? That's a pro play right there. Oh yeah. Most important part, this is gonna be an awesome burger. Let's have a great season, folks. Let's get some wins. Let's eat some good food. It's football season, baby. Hot damn, I love this. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. Please go check out my socials if you want to see any cool links to get discounts on my sponsors, Game Guard, Favorites Barbecue. Like, subscribe, comment. Check out Sikkim365. Come see me at the tailgate. Let's have a season. Take them bears. If you're out looking for a great selection of new cars and trucks, then shop Alan Samuels in Waco because we have some of the best deals in Central Texas that will put you in a new vehicle and driving away with confidence. During the Labor Day sales event, you can take your pick, a new 2022 Dodge Charger or Dodge Challenger, and receive 0% for 72 months and no payments for 90 days. If you're a first responder, you get an extra $500 off your purchase. High-quality vehicles from a dealership with a hometown feel. Alan Samuels in Waco. Did you know that Waco Regional Tennis and Fitness is a partner of the city of Waco? Did you know that we are open to the public? Waco Regional Tennis and Fitness offers day passes to the public for only $10 a day, and we offer money-saving memberships. Waco Regional Tennis and Fitness offers over 40 group exercise classes each week, including bar, yoga, boot camp, indoor cycling, and more. There are free weights, weight machines, TRX, rowing machines, stationary bikes, new treadmills, elliptical machines, and much more on the spacious weight room floor. Personal training available where you can be encouraged to grow. Sauna, Whirlpool, 
full tanning bed and kids club, 17 tennis courts, eight pickleball courts, youth and adult tennis and pickleball lessons. Waco's premier experience where you can help your mind, body, and soul. Visit our website at wacotennis.com. Call us at 254-753-7675 or visit us next to Hawaiian Falls on Lakeshore Drive in Waco. Pizza, burgers, and Bears football. There's no place around Waco that serves them all other than Bubba's 33. Come show your green and gold and enjoy some of Waco's best food and beverages while watching your favorite team, the Bears. When real Bears fans get hungry, Bubba's 33 is the number one spot for ice-cold drinks, hand-stretched, stone-baked pizzas, and bacon-infused burgers. Join us for indoor or patio dining. Bubba's 33, Waco's restaurant and proud supporter of Baylor Bears football. Sick'em, Bears. TFNB Your Bank for Life is the official local bank of Baylor Athletics. Find out why more Central Texas are making TFNB their bank for life. Sign up for our Edge checking and savings accounts to earn interest or cash back with five convenient locations and an award-winning mobile app. Banking has never been easier. TFNB Your Bank for Life. Member FDIC. It was broad daylight. I stepped into a gas station for five minutes to grab a snack, and just like that, my car was broken into. They made out like a bandit. My laptop, my phone, everything. I called my agent to see what could be done, and he restored my faith in humanity. My claim was processed so quickly, and I was able to recover my losses. Stop by and see our agents at one of our three McLennan County locations. Coverage and discounts are subject to qualifications and policy terms and may vary by situation. Game Day Live on Sikkim 365 Radio is brought to you by Texas Farm Bureau Insurance, TFNB, your bank for life, Richard Carr Buick GMC Cadillac, Three Nations Brewing Company, Waco Regional Tennis and Fitness, Edward Jones Advisors, Ben Erlinson, Tom Albers, Brad Wilson, and Cam Heathcott, and Bubba's 33. Back here in our studio, 365 Sports, and again, game day live. UTSA now leads Houston 21-7, four minutes left third quarter. Arkansas now up 21-7 on Cincinnati in that game in the second half. Oklahoma 35-10, five minutes left third quarter in their game against UTEP as well. But some interesting news in college football this week. First of all, the story about ESPN and Fox Opening up, at least at some point, whatever term you want to use, the look at what will be in the future with the Big 12 and the TV deal. And then yesterday's news about the college football playoff expansion. How about that? College football, at least as we've gone through all of this drama through the spring and summer, looks like things are starting to come together and everybody might be involved. I think it's great news for college football that they're finally doing this, that they've been beating around the bush about uh, this particular plan for over a year now uh, with the 12-team playoff. They voted on it pretty much as is, and while they have the devils in the details, it just kind of shows you the absolute uh, sorcery that Kevin Warren pulled last summer in slowing this so he could get his conference set up for the 12 team playoff the way he wanted it to be. And so now it's happening and I'm, I'm thrilled about it. I think it's good for the PAC 12. I think it's good for the big 12. I think it's good for everybody that this has happened. Now the big dogs are still going to get their way, but at least there's more now. Yeah, I mean, there's things to like about it and get excited about, and there's things that uh, might not be so great. I think we need to see more details on exactly how it plays out, but I do like the automatic qualifier aspect of it because you are guaranteed if you're the pack of the Big 12 or some of the others, not named the SEC Big 10, uh, you know you're going to have your champion in that uh, playoff, so that's huge news for the conferences involved. If you're a G5, then... Uh, you've been on the outside looking in outside of a Cincinnati and uh, finally they get in last year but uh, it's kind of you know slim pickings you have to be unbeaten if you're a G5 you have to be unbeaten if you're you know big 12 teams most of the time so uh, now to know that they're gonna you know have this chance is like the highest ranked teams if they can find themselves in that mix and they'll find themselves in the playoffs so I mean it leaves it open to everybody um, I think all of the, the hand-wringing over keeping it super exclusive and, you know, I see the comments of, well, it's just still going to be Ohio State, Alabama, and Georgia, okay, and that's fine. They can earn their way there by playing an extra game or two. I don't know why we need to treat them with kid gloves like, 
you know, let's make this as easy as possible for them because there might be blowouts. I just think it's um, kind of silly that there's this much pushback on, you know, a few extra teams being involved uh, because there might be blowouts. But we love protecting this. Like, for example, everything else in sports is determined by some tournament of some sort. This is the only sport in the world where people go, you know what? All these other sports are wrong. We need the media to decide who our champion should be because they should be the ones to pick who gets into this thing. And I know the playoff committee is involved as well, but it's an extension of the media in so many ways because it just is echoing the same comments. So I just find that to have always been silly, that you'd rather side with just people's opinions rather than results on the field. So this will have more results on the field affecting the playoff than just a committee getting together. And why people are against that, that's beyond me. I have no idea. I don't know why you would ever be against giving a pe- uh, in anybody a chance to win what they're trying to go to practice in offseason and practice and plays and get. Let them have a chance. And this one, at least, it appears as if it will, although it also could just secure what Clemson or Ohio State or what Georgia and Alabama and others can do year in and year out as well. You know, not changing the playoff because it would, you know, just be fait accompli because the other ones would get in it and not making it harder It would be like, I'm not changing the channel because there's no batteries in the remote. Like, just... Go change it. Like, go get some batteries and change it. Yeah, there's going to be a little step, but it seems like laziness to be just defeated by the fact. And saying, like, okay, let's let the media decide or let's let this group of people in a room decide as opposed to, I mean, what if you got down to the last four teams of the NCAA tournament and they're like, all right, instead of playing these games, let's just let these guys decide who they like the most. I mean, it's, it's just... How about if the Super Bowl is decided by a group of NFL committee members getting together and deciding who the four best teams were to get into the playoff. And it wasn't about winning the NFC East or winning the AFC South, getting yourself an automatic playoff berth because winning your division means something. No, let's just say uh, we think these teams, not, not that they proved it necessarily, we think they're the four best teams because that's what we think and that's what everybody else just has to deal with. That's how college football has been deciding it. Has it still been the best teams? For the most part, yeah, because I think it's pretty easy to identify. But there are years when there's a fifth team or a sixth team that perhaps is playing hot towards the end of the year or maybe stylistically is a little different than the same old, same old, and we're afraid or we don't want to see those teams have an opportunity is this not the land of opportunity? And yet this is the one sport where opportunity is like almost impossible to come by if you're not 20 schools. And that just has never made sense. Uh, it doesn't make sense. And I'm glad that at least blowouts or not, if you're a Baylor, you're a Cincinnati, you're an Oklahoma State, yeah, you can find yourself in the playoff but just going and winning your conference and not leaving it up to a bunch of people to decide on whether you're worthy or not for their little special tournament. AM and 31 nothing. two minutes left against Sam Houston State. Georgia now 42-3. They are mauling Oregon and UTSA 21-7, as I mentioned, late third, an update That's against shocking. 24th ranked Houston. When we come back, we will hear from Darby Brown again from McLean Stadium a little bit later on. Conversation with Baylor head coach Darby, excuse me, Baylor head coach Dave Aranda. This is Game Day Live. Central Texas Plumbing Solutions is the team you can count on to go the extra mile and resolve your plumbing problems quickly and thoroughly, getting it done right the first time. We want to wish the Big 12 champion Bears great success this season. Sick of Bears. I don't know what any of this stuff is. Is the seat not starting? <laughs> Token, can you please come help? Y'all call for a tow? Yes. Y'all call for a tow? Yes. Call Toking 24 hours a day for all your emergency roadside needs. One thing I hear most often from my patients is they still have pain after back surgery. In fact, almost 50% of my patients have experienced failed back surgery. I had a disc decompression, which actually didn't work. I didn't ever think I was going to feel better. Then I went to advanced pain care. Now I feel better than I've ever felt before. When advanced pain care says the pain stops here, they definitely mean it. I am thankful to Advanced Pain Care for getting me back to doing the things I love. Call today for a same day appointment. Locations across Texas. Advanced Pain Care, pain stops here. Central Texas Plumbing Solutions is the team you can count on to go the extra mile and resolve your plumbing problems quickly and thoroughly, getting it done right the first time. We want to wish the Big 12 champion Bears great success this season. Sick of Bears. 
WTX has the most advanced technology powered by Johnson Brothers Ford. Back inside of our studios, 365 Sports Game Day Live and joined again at McLean Stadium by KWTX Darby Brown, who joined us earlier as they were about to, and we're doing the bear walk. And Darby, we're getting closer within an hour of kickoff. Your thoughts on the atmosphere at McLean Stadium? It is great out here. The Baylor line is lining up behind me. It is the stadium is definitely filling in, and it is. Uh, I will say it's getting a little steamier out here. The sun's been coming out. It's pretty humid. It's pretty hot, but people are showing up regardless. So that is good. Darby, you look. Are you getting ready to run the line? I mean, you're wearing yellow today, so. <laughs> I definitely could. I, I could probably blend in. And, you know, I mean, a lot of times people think I'm in college around here anyways. So I'll take it. At this point, I'm old enough that I, I'll take that. But, uh, no, I'm, I, it would be fun, though. I, I'm jealous of RG3 got to do it. What was that last year? That was, that was pretty cool. So I, I, I have a feeling it would get trampled, though. Somehow it wouldn't go well. So... <laughs> All right, Darby, all right, we're getting close to kickoff, and Baylor's a heavy favorite, as they should be because of last year and who they have coming back, even though they have a lot of players now in the NFL. Your thoughts about what you want to see, a clean game, athleticism, just to obviously a dominant win. What are a couple of things you would like to see? I want to see a lot of points. I think I am curious to see Baylor's receiving core, the running backs, you know, those skilled players that we talked about earlier. So I want to see a lot of points on the board. And then, yeah, like you mentioned, a clean game. I think the key to a lot of Baylor's su success last year was they were really disciplined and limited penalties. So I'd like to see them continue that tonight. We're going to hear from Dave Aranda here in just a moment. And you have seen him and where he has matured into what as a head coach from 2-7 and seven to 12-2 and two, and now with the expectations. What are your thoughts about what you see and hear from Dave Aranda now that we've seen him for a couple of years? He's confident in who he is. I think there's no question about that. We have learned to know his quirkiness, love his quirkiness around here and kind of appreciate it. And I think that the players have bought into that as well. And he's confident in who he is. I mean, and during that last press conference, he quoted a jazz musician or something along that line. I mean, how many college coaches are doing things like that? But he is confident in that and in those things that he picks up on that other coaches don't. So I think he just has really grown into who he is as a head coach, and that's been really key to his success. Darby, it's great to have you with us as far as what we do on game days, game day live with KWTX and CW. Thanks for your time today. We'll see you soon. Thanks, guys. See you out uh, here. Darby Brown with us uh, from McLean Stadium and also on the road with road games. Either Darby or Chris Williams will be a part of what we do every week. Dave Aranda, my conversation with the Baylor head coach is next. Game Day Live on News 10 is sponsored locally by TFNB, your bank for life, advanced pain care, and Central Texas Plumbing Solutions. interiors from designer drapes to custom total installation quality area rugs to a wide selection of floor covering home place interiors has you covered with over 40 years of experience you can trust john proctor and his knowledgeable staff to help you with your next home project home place interiors where we do business the old-fashioned way on a handshake Experience affordable luxury living at Case & Associates Properties in Waco and Temple. Enjoy a variety of floor plans with stainless steel appliances, vaulted ceilings, open floor plans, designer colors, washer and dryer connections, and so much more. See for yourself, stop by, and tour our property near you. The iconic Hewitt, Tuscany Ranch in Waco, Portico at Friars Creek and Temple, and the Bend at New Road in Waco, and take the first step into your new luxury apartment from Case & Associates.
from a very difficult COVID year of two and seven to a year where Baylor had their best year ever. Dave Aranda, his third year as head coach, his thoughts about the opener against Albany and the state of his football program. This segment on Baylor Athletics on Sikkim 365 Radio is brought to you by Richard Carr Buick GMC Cadillac. Learn more at richardcarr.com. Baylor football coach Dave Aranda with me, David Smoke on Sikkim 365 Radio. Do you ever really know who you have as a team or what your team is until they play their first game or they get tested the first time? No, I think so. I think you know the... Um what's what's inside of them and you know I think coaches see the greatness inside of players I think um, you know I think what ends up what happens sometimes is that it, there's never really just a ascent and so you know the greatest uh, player development is really coach development so that you know so that when things are hard or things don't go as planned and all this other thing that coaches can um, can really be better because you end up coaching who you are and it's in those critical moments where anything that was built up when the sun was shining and the days are, are, are happy and bright that are lost when the storm hits you know and so I think the, the ability to kind of weather all of that and to really almost really kind of invite it uh, because that is where we grow and then kind of you know um to uh, meet people where they're at and kind of build them up, I think builds a better you and builds a better, you know, um, builds a better person. You have a lot of players who are moving into roles that are much more prevalent than they've been because you lost some great players, but you have a lot of them coming through the system. Do you change your schematic or how you look at things based on who now is up next? Yes. Yeah, I think both, I think offensively that's the case. I think we've got a fair a fairly strong tight end room and so I think you'll see more of them on the field I think you have a, a really talented young receiver room so I think they'll be kind of a maturing into more of them on the field um, as it goes and I think you know defensively you see a really strong kind of front seven and so you're going to see more um, uh, more ways, not only that they can kind of hold the back end together, but more ways we can kind of let them loose. And then I think in the in the back end, there's some youth and some really talented people. So there's going to be a lot more true zone stuff early, with uh, the ability to show uh, or to work to show the ability to play tighter man coverage. And so I think all of that is based upon yeah, you know who you have, what's possible what best fits us, you know, what is what is the nature of us, you know, and those things. A young player who hasn't played much, and then they get their first shot and they make a play. Last year, you, I asked you about the difference between the fronts in the SEC compared to maybe the Big 12, and obviously you have a tremendous front. You made, I believe what you told me is in the SEC, they just let them run. They just go, and it's more scheme-oriented here. Do you, are you getting closer to what you have up front to what you saw in the SEC? I'd like to, I'd like to think so. You know, we're going to have to do that. Um, in in game situations um i thought towards the end of last year there were times where we were doing that and so i think you know for this year um to be tested continually to where we don't have to to um you know see a blitz on on sunday and put it into the game plan for the next week and all of these things that um, aren't really it, you know, but to do it to where, hey, this is a technique that we've worked on since spring, since summer, since fall, and now it's showing up in the most competitive pressurized situation. That That's the ideal. But I think, you know, success can get in the way of that, right, just like failure can. And so I think f that would be ideal for us, but to, to do, we have, we clearly have to do it first. Blake Shapin, your guy, he's the number one quarterback. Does he have a swagger, but is controlled? How, how do you, how would you define him? Yeah, he's a, um, he's a reserved, reserved guy. And um, I appreciate that about him. You know, he studies, you know, the, the, I'm doing one-on-ones with the team and guys will come up and they'll, they'll say how they were in Blake's, um, 
apartment kind of uh, hanging out over the weekend. He's got like playbooks and drawings all sprayed across his floor. <laughs> and it's kind of like, um, you know, I don't know from the sounds of it, it's kind of um, like that. What was the Russell Crowe Beautiful Mind mm -hmm. stuff going? But there's times when Blake makes these throws, whether it's the arm angle or, you know, the release point or just the velocity on the throw where guys are going, oh, did you see that? Sometimes it's like, did you hear that? And so I think like those those things combined with the, the studying part right and not saying a lot I think are really cool ways to go about it when was the last time you lost your temper long time yeah I don't know it's been a long time I keep thinking maybe something will do it but no it hasn't it hasn't happened I don't know is that part of what you've learned? Uh, I think I was control kind of... what you can control and all of... I think I was kind of born that way, probably. Um, and then, you know, I just think... I mean, typically, people... I was talking to someone about this the other day, where I think typically people like me, you know, we get... Um, murdered before we get to this seat. We don't make it this far. <laughs> We're kind of stomped and beaten to death on the side of the road, right, by others that are just more, I don't know, forceful, assertive, you know, quick to judgment, you know, loud, powerful. And so I just think, you know, to kind of take something that was kind of a weakness and try to use, try to show it as, you know, there's power and weakness is, um, I don't know, it's, it's that's part of what this is. What do you enjoy more, practice or game day? Practice. Yeah, I think, you know, there you can see, I mean, you can, it's, I wouldn't say it's 100%. Um, because the you know the ball can bounce a bunch of funny ways, but mm -hmm. you can tell if you know you, the attitude's right, if things are hooked up right in practice, just by how you're attacking little things. Guys are running on the field, right? Uh, guys that aren't getting reps are focused on the guy getting the reps. Guys are teaching other guys. Right? Um, guys are the the effort at the end of practice and the energy is greater than it was in the start. And so when when you are like that, just that part. One more thing about football: you have your defense that has this great front seven, the mm -hmm. offense obviously with your offensive line and quarterback. How did you manage letting the offense get their legs under them, and yet letting Coach Roberts and the defense do what all they want to do with their aggressive? the way they play the game. Well, I, I appreciate that. I think it's, it was a great communication between Ron and Jeff. I think really working, and, and they did the work it, to communicate and to, you know, hey, this is kind of where we're at. Um, you know, how do you feel about these blitzes? Yeah, this is great. Or, hey, we want to try to get some shot plays. You know, we'd love it versus this coverage. Yeah, that's great. And just that type of communication, I think, you know, so much, so many times in practice, it can turn towards, you know, it's me versus you. And, you know, no one really gives a damn who won the third, you know, day of fall camps, team, team period two. No one remembers and no one cares. You know, what we're trying to do is get guys better. And, and you know, it's me with you. Right, getting you better, you getting me better. And we're both trying to beat what we did yesterday. And I think to see it that way in a longer view is um, sometimes difficult to do because of the, the training of the past. You kind of have to unlearn what you've learned. Last question. You look out all this construction, built, growth, arms race in college football. Compare it to two years ago when there was so uh, the cloud of COVID to last year to this year. What do you see? What What do you see when you look out this window? The sim the symbol of just continuing to grow, continuing to improve. I think that's just a way cool thing, and that, that's um, I can see that everywhere I look. Like your football team. Yeah. Thanks, Dave. Thank you, Baylor football coach Dave Aranda, three sixty five Sports. We're back to wrap it up right after this here on Game Day Live. But don't forget, if you'd like to sign up for Sikkim365.com, some of the best coverage anywhere when it comes to 
Baylor and the Big 12. Uh, we love it because it's our people, but we believe it's the best. You can hear from Travis Roder. You can hear from Craig Smoke. You can hear from Grayson Grudafer and so many more people. Kendall Count on the site, Sikkim365.com slash KWTX. Special going on right now, 15 bucks for the year. So sign up, Sikkim365.com slash KWTX for that $15. Our predictions on the game and some score wrap-ups next on Game Day Live. With so many companies and policies out there, it gets so confusing shopping for insurance, and I never know if I'm getting the policy that's right for me. Luckily, I met the team at the Nitchie Group Insurance Agency. With the Nitchie Group, you can go to one company and get access to coverage options from many insurance carriers, and you get to speak to a real person about your specific coverage needs. With the Nitchie Group, I know I'm getting the right coverage at the right price. If you need insurance, talk to the experts at the Nitchie Group at 1-800-258-8302. Three Nations Brewing Company has 16 different beers on draft with a new beer every Friday. It also offers two air-conditioned tap rooms, a large indoor beer hall, a second-floor mezzanine offering a great overview of the brewing company and equipment and patio where you can relax under the shade. Plus, you can now experience the new Three Nations Beer Garden Grill on our shaded patio. Grab a cold beer and enjoy a bite from our freshly prepared and delicious menu. Street tacos, quesadillas, freshly cooked burgers and dogs, and veggie burgers, too. Nachos and so much more all prepared and cooked on site. So come visit the award-winning Three Nations Brewing Company on East Vandergrift off I-35 in Carrollton. Cars price right both day and night. Average your car in Texas. Trucks built for you, red, white, and blue. Average your car in Texas. Cars that zoom with lots of room. Average your car in Texas. Count on us, a dealer to trust. Average your car in Waco, Texas. Did you know that Waco Regional Tennis and Fitness is a partner of the city of Waco? Did you know that we are open to the public? Waco Regional Tennis and Fitness offers day passes to the public for only $10 a day, and we offer money-saving memberships. Waco Regional Tennis and Fitness offers over 40 group exercise classes each week, including bar, yoga, boot camp, indoor cycling, and more. There are free weights, weight machines, TRX, rowing machines, stationary bikes, new treadmills, elliptical machines, and much more in the spacious weight room floor. Personal training available where you can be encouraged to grow. Sauna, World tanning bed and kids club 17 tennis courts eight pickleball courts youth and adult tennis and pickleball lessons waco's premier experience where you can help your mind body and soul visit our website at wacotennis.com call us at 254-753-7675 or visit us next to hawaiian falls on lakeshore drive in waco Game Day Live on Sikkim 365 Radio is brought to you by Texas Farm Bureau Insurance, TFNB, your bank for life, Richard Carr Buick GMC Cadillac, Green Nations Brewing Company, Waco Regional Tennis and Fitness, Edward Jones Advisors, Ben Erlinson, Tom Albers, Brad Wilson, and Cam Heathcott, and Bubba's 33. Back here again with Game Day Live in our studios, 365 Sports on Elm and MLK. Paul Catalina, Craig Smoke, and I'm David Smoke. Garrett Ross running the mothership as well. Uh, A&M rolled past Sam Houston State. Long delays. They win 31 to nothing. Cincinnati and Arkansas now late third quarter. It's 21-7 Hogs, but they are driving against Cincinnati. And also 21 Houston. 21-17. 21-17. Also Houston now. Uh, has tied up UTSA. That was 21-7, and Houston's come back to tie that game up early in the fourth quarter, and UTSA now inside of the Houston 40-yard line. Yeah, I think, uh, by the way, uh, Georgia and Oregon at 49-3, I think Oregon's got them right where they want them. Lulled into that false sense of security. Yeah, I think the back uh, the Big Ten's just uh, clamoring for Oregon to join them like as soon as Monday. It's a big <laughs> announcement. That'd be really great in the wake of this game uh, would be to announce the Ducks after a tail kicking like that. But, uh, yeah, I mean, Cincinnati's uh, made it more of a fight, although uh, Arkansas has first and goal up four. 
late third quarter. I mean, a long time left to play, but, um, you know, if they get it in here, go up double digits, it's going to make it, uh, you know, a, a situation to hold a climb out of for, for the Bearcats. They've been climbing, uh, but they might fall down a little bit further here if Arkansas can punch this in. So we'll see how they defend that. But, yeah, Houston uh, and UTSA looks like it's a heck of a game. Uh, good to see the Cougars wake up a little bit because that looked early on like they were going to get embarrassed by Meep Meep. Uh, but instead, they are, uh, you know, potentially going to find themselves the heck of a comeback win. But uh, we'll see. 21-21, UTSA's got the ball uh, early fourth quarter. Oklahoma 42-13. They just started the fourth quarter against UTEP. The Caleb Williams, Lincoln Riley, USC era has begun. 7 nothing. Williams completes his first four passes as they lead Rice 7 nothing. I have to say one thing for Oklahoma fans out there. Uh, you know, some of the things that your beat writers are tweeting, I was tweeting back in 2013 and 14 when, you know, the Baylor offense was doing the same things that Jeff Levy's doing today, although with his own tweaks on it. But as much as those really quick drives are fun, you know, 57 second drive wow 65 second drive wow like literally go back on my timeline you'll see that and i'm seeing it all over today and that's great but one thing you're learning is not only their fast offensive drives they are long football games because this bad boy kicked off at 2 30 and i think it's early they're, fourth quarter so that's also something you have to get used to yeah they're gonna they're, be four hour games yeah. there's there's an inverse ratio that i think a lot of people aren't aware of and of course we used to get to see it back-to-back -back night so we would do a high school game with two teams running that same offense that would be really long and then get up in the morning and go do a Baylor game with two teams running that offense and it would be that long yeah it would be from Chris on the chat room we appreciate it 365 sports YouTube Phil Knight must be salty losing Cristobal and now his team imploding seems like a lot of money that was wasted uh, also uh, uh, someone mentioned watch out we said about UTSA with Jeff Trailer that game still has long long oh, way yeah. to go in that one also that's not a surprise that they're right in the thick of this I mean that's what I expected all. I was just surprised they jumped out early like they did but then again big crowd in San Antonio biggest game they've had there maybe ever and and so yeah it's it's playing out like I, I kind of thought it would there will be more drama today in college football but the one with North Carolina holding off Appalachian State by missing a two-point conversion with basically the game over was amazing Mac Brown will sleep uh, either not very well or pass out after hey. holding off a 40-point fourth quarter uh -huh. for App State. Yeah, this is I've great. been thoroughly unimpressed with the Mac Brown North Carolina run so far. I mean, it's been fine, I guess, but uh, you know, it's not. Uh, it's not been the wow, Mac Brown's back in North Carolina, that kind of thing. It's been just sort of okay and uh, has remained that way. Uh, and Arkansas just kicked a field goal, so they're going to go up seven. But nice for Cincy to hold them to a field goal. So only down a touchdown uh, late third quarter. All right, Baylor, Albany, uh, we all put our predictions in. I said 51-13. Craig, you mentioned a blowout as well. Is that correct? That's what we expect. Yeah. Just go out, look like a dominant team, look like a top 10 team, look like a defending Big 12 champion, and take care of your business. I had people wanting to talk about the Albany, getting to get an Albany Baylor breakdown rather than talk college football playoff yesterday. And I was just like, we got an expanded playoff. This has more to do with the whole world of college football than, than anything Albany Baylor related. Uh, I think the Bears win this game with, with ease. They should. There should not be a fight to win this game. But excited to see a lot of young players. Excited to see Blake Shapin have full control of the, the offense and know that it's his. And just excited to see them back out there on the field. But yeah, outside of health, I'm not really... Um, concerned about too much else. I think that they're going to have their way this game. All right. Uh, a lot of people to think, including Josh Young at KWT Action. And we mentioned Darby Brown and Chris Williams, Barry Bass as well. And a lot of people behind the scenes that made today happen, our debut of Game Day Live. Not with what we've been doing this for a while, for a couple of years, but adding KWTX and or CW to what we do on the television every Saturday. Paul Catalina, Jack McKenzie, Levi Carraway, also, Emery Winter and uh, uh, Jacob Wilson, all of them uh, helping us with what we did today behind the scene. Obviously, Craig Smoke, I'm David Smoke, and Garrett Ross, who's been running the mothership as well. We will be back at it again next Saturday. We will have game day live before the Brigham Young game. We'll have coverage from Provo, Utah, as well as Baylor plays future Big 12 member BYU, a team that they beat last year uh, at home. I'm David Smoke. For everyone, all of everyone behind us, including our great sponsors, this is Game Day Live. Baylor and Albany start at 6 o'clock. When storms damage your roof, there's only one place to call, and it's Montgomery Construction and Roofing. MCR offers detailed bids for affordable quality roof repair and replacement. 
schedule your free inspection and make sure your damage is repaired right the first time. Our claim specialist can help walk you through filing an insurance claim for wind and hail too. Say goodbye to damaged roofs and yes to Montgomery Construction and Roofing. We roof Texas and we are here to serve you. We are so fortunate to have beautiful lakes all across Central Texas. Here are some helpful boating safety tips for fun on the water. Pay attention and have a passenger as a lookout. Wear the proper life jackets and have a boating safety kit. Check the weather beforehand. Don't overload the boat. No swimming while the motor is running. Avoid alcohol. Operate at a safe speed. Watch out for low water areas or submerged objects. These safety tips are brought to you by Marineland Boating Center. Right now, during our once a year Labor Day sale, not only will you save hundreds, not only do we have 60 months interest-free financing, but you'll find hundreds of items in stock and available now. Like your choice of these stylish American-made sofas for just $4.99 for a limited time. Plus, enjoy free ice cream and soda while you shop. Hurry in while supplies last. Home Zone, Texas born, family owned. Catch up on the day's news with KWTX News 10. 